Indeed, we have gathered here this morning to pray. Everything we have to do with God is prayer. And prayer means relationship. Relationship. But this kind of relationship is a relationship between the master and the servant. The servant needs everything for existence from the master. I mean everything for existence from the master. There is nothing the servant can possess or have or do without the master. Yet, the master is available all the time to listen to the servant. The goal of the master is to see that servant is happy and full, have fulfillment in his or her life. This kind of relationship is relationship we have. And it's very important for us to understand that when we pray, it is not to command God to do something. When I pray, it is for my own advantage. If I don't pray, it is for my own disadvantage. What is the gain God has? No gain. If there is any gain, it is the gain, the only gain God can have is that he wants us to be happy. He wants you to be happy. That's the gain of God. He is not God to be happy. God is happiness par excellence. He doesn't need to be. He is. Happiness is a part of him. So if we come to him, we draw the happiness from him. If we say we don't want to go to him, we remain sad all the time. Like the, 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 the worthy man or the rich man who left Jesus Christ, we, we are told he went home sad. Because to be with Jesus, happiness becomes true. And we pray because we acknowledge that we are mere creatures. We were created in time and we will end in time. Only God is a necessary being. Only God is only existence that is necessary. He doesn't depend on anything to exist because every existence has a root in him. But every other person sitting down here and the whole world, we are what we call contingent beings, which means we are dependent beings. We cannot be without him. It is necessary that we connect with him. Is, there is no option. Only the one who cannot relate to pray to God is only one who assumes himself or herself as God. Or a beast. Which means he prays unto himself. He sees himself or herself as being complete. But it's a lie. Because of whom we are. And what we are. We cannot but rely on God. Even those who don't think about God. Even those who don't worship God. They have one word or the other. Recognizing that something is propelling, something is pushing them in being, something is making them move, move, move. And only God is a moved mover. He moves everything, but it's not moved by anything. We are moved, we sleep, we wake up, we die, we rise, we die, we rise. Only God does not wake up, does not rise, is always awake. Any day God closes his eyes, the whole being goes out of, out of existence. Any day God says, I want to sleep one minute. That day, all of us will cease to be. It becomes necessary that each one of us, prayer 
is not a work to be done. It's a relationship. Today we have read in the first reading, book of Exodus. We are told the people of, the people of God, they were journeying from Egypt. After they had been in Egypt for 430 years, in a hor horrible situation, they lived a life of desperation, hopelessness. They have lost the hope that is, that is God. Until God says, I am God all the time. Even when you don't feel like my presence, I am there. Because God lives in eternity. We live in time. Time is in, in eternity. God oversees all. That's why if you pray now, if you tell God, I am asking you for this favor, do it for me. God will answer you. But remember, you are praying from the time. God is in eternity. So your time, if God says, I will do it for you, maybe we do it next year. It is still now. Because God has no yesterday. He has no tomorrow. Everything is today. That's why my prayer and your prayer will be, Lord, help me to understand your will. Help me to understand your will so that I'll be patient enough to wait your time to come to me. Anybody who prays as if he lives in eternity is a waste of, waste of time because God is the only one who lives in eternity. You live in time. So if you pray now, do not think God does not listen to you. He listens to you. But he lives in eternity. You live in time. Because you're kind of time. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. In God, there's what you call undivided now. Undivided now. Which means a now that has no division. Because if you put division in now, you have yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Remove all those divisions. becomes eternity. The people of God, they left Egypt. The horror of Egypt. The, the past the Red Sea, the horror of Red Sea, we are the, when they thought they had gone, Moses prayed. The unimaginable happened. The sea opened for them. And they passed through. And they said, our God liveth. Our God liveth. Because they saw their enemies gone. They enter into the desert, the land of experience. Desert is the land of experience. If you are a Christian or anybody on earth, desert is always in front of us. It's a moment to know whether you are worshiping God for what he has done for you or you are worshiping him because he is God. If you are worshiping God because of what he has done for you, you are just, you are at the very beginning of the journey. We have to make a kind of step forward to begin to worship God because he's God. Which means if I ask him to heal my mom or my dad, if I ask him for a favor he doesn't do, I will not say what happened. He is still God. Even before my problem came to me, he is, he is and will continue to be even after. The people of God were in the desert. They were heading towards the mountain Sinai. And then there was, there was a country or a particular group of people, the nomads, Amalek, Amalekites. They are like Fulanese of Nigeria. They live in the desert. And they, when they were, these people of God were passing through the desert, they were very tired. They were very hungry. Very thirsty. So they assumed that these people they will meet in the desert, at least they will ask them for a cup of water and some fruits. So when they got there, they met their surprises. Instead of them, remember they are tired. They're hungry. They're thirsty. In our journey of faith, Every now and then we feel dry. We feel tired. That was what St. Paul says. When I am weak, then I'm strong. 
Every now and then, as a Christian, as the journey we are making, we feel tired. We feel something is wrong with me. I am fed up in this marriage. I am fed up in this my journey. My business is no more working. I'm fed up. Things are against me. Everybody's against me. This is a time of great trial. The Amalekites, instead of helping them, fought, they fought them and killed some of them. Obstacles on the way. Obstacles are there on the way. You will find your Amalekites are in front of you. Every one of us in our journey in the desert. The world is desert. The world we are is desert. A lot of uncertainties. And there are many Amalekites in front. It can be from the family. It can be my husband, my wife, my children, my place of work. They are in front of me. What do I do at this time? And I probably you think those who are who those in front of you could be your friends. Like they thought that these people, when they go, go to them, they ask them, please, just a cup of water or at least a mango, mango, or orange, orange fruit. But they fought them and killed them. Why? Because these people thought that these people either they have come to replace them, or after they want to sack them from the desert, they have nowhere. This is our home. Therefore, let us kill them before they kill us. At this, time, at this time, again, after they have passed the Red Sea, remember when they got the Red Sea, there was almost hopelessness. They said, telling Moses, what have you done? So is the plan you have with God or what? To bring us at this point that Egyptians are coming, Red Sea in front of us, how do we survive? And, and when Moses looked up at heaven and said, God, I have to report to you all this. And God said, said to him, tell the people, you see, these are your enemies. You will not see them again. You see them. They are, they will, all their power, they will, they will disappear in a minute before your eyes. Again, Amalekites have already come again in front. How do we go through them? They are not already seen in front of us. I want all of you to know, if you are a Christian, be ready at any time to meet other Red Sea or the desert or the Amalekites. If you are a Christian and you are not ready to meet all these, you will never go forward. You will go back. You will go back to old life. Our journey of faith is marked by this. One huddle after another huddle after another huddle until the last huddle. Jesus led us, it was in front of us, who told us this is the way from this one, then glory. If you are not ready to pass through the desert, don't think about promised land. Anyone who is not ready to pass through the desert, forget about the promised land. It is at this point. Again, Moses, a man of God, he says to Joshua, my dear Joshua, you know your name. Your name is Joshua. And your, your Joshua means God saves. God will save these people through you. So you go in front. Do some act. Keep fighting them, blocking them. But I have to go to take the power, the real power from God. This power is the power that will sustain you. My dear brothers and sisters, prayer has to balance with work. As we are praying, we must do something. There are many people who make, who make mistakes. When you have problems, you run to the pastor, he tells you things easier. Do you There's no way. Prayer. But you have to do some work. Now, next year, election is coming. We are praying for Nigeria in distress. Nigeria in distress. We are praying this, say this prayer for a long time. And once I wrote a article that said, Nigeria is not in distress, but Nigeria is the distress. We are the people who cause the distress. 
Because every now and then, every four years, we are given an option. We are given an option to make a choice. We are speaking to God, God, please, give us the grace, give us a good leader. I beg you, it's okay. I'm going to give you, you see this man, that woman, that man, that man. You know their antecedents. You know what they have done before. Now, make a choice. I am giving you wisdom. Wisdom and rationality. Make a choice, not only for yourself. If I, if, let me put this person, at least he will employ me. It's not only about you. For the good of the people. Not because it's my brother, my sister, my friend. No. Somebody who will be good. Who, has, who is ready to sacrifice everything for the good of the people. Like Moses, he will go up now interceding for the people. Like Joshua, he will be in front of the war, trying to fight to save his people. Not the one who will be thinking about my family, my friends. This is the problem. We pray, but our activities are different from prayers. So we can collect bribe, we collect some money, we call it some money, we call it some bribe, t-shirt, and whatnot. At four years, people who are going through the same sickness every four years and expecting to have healing after. No. Every four years, the same. Every four years, the same. They come with the same tactics, the same antics, the same plan, and we fall for it. It means we do not pray truly. We do not actually pray. Because prayer transforms my activity. My activity is sustained by, by prayer. It is not praying, but doing something else. We have another time again. Next year, we have another opportunity again. We can pray. Pray and pray. But if the prayer is not transformed into what we're going to do, do we have a problem? Moses went up to the hill, and we're told he raised all his hands up. And whenever the hands are up, there's a victory. When he's tired, they're defeated. What does it mean? Consistency in prayer. When you begin to pray, Keep speaking to God. Keep speaking to God. Keep speaking to God until what you're asking for comes to you. As long as it's good, not only for you, but for others. That's what's called prayer. Garmented, covered with faith. Let me give you an example. I had experience many years ago of a, a reverend sister, of good, a good friend of mine, a reverend sister, who, who had a uh, uh, immaculate sister. She had pain on her stomach for, for months. She was dying slowly, by the way. And when she was diagnosed, they confirmed that she had cancer. Cancer. You know, if you have cancer, if you, die, you die faster, faster. For the fact that you, you are told you have cancer, death will come faster for, in your mind already, before the main death comes. And she calls me that, look at the situation. She uh, can have cancer. And I say to her, well, what's going to happen is, because there's, there's what's called, when you pray, that's what I'm going to say in the gospel now. The, that widow who was saying, this, woman, this judge, he must... You must do it for me. You must do it. Even if you like it or not. You don't respect the man, but you must do it. When you pray, tell God you, you must do it. Because you are the only one. I don't have alternative. You must, even if you don't do it today, but you must do. Genuine faith and genuine prayer. I told her, if that is true, we tell God. My prayer to God was, God, I know your will. Is the best. And I said to her, you go and pray, and I will pray myself. I will speak to God, telling him he is the only one who must heal you. 
at least make this prayer, that particular sickness. Let it be one of the sickness of the, of the stomach, maybe intestine something, but not the not cancer. So two, two weeks ago, two weeks before, after, she had to go for the last one, and then chemotherapy will start. She was dying already, slowly, slowly. I said, go, go, and the, get, the, get the test. Two weeks, after, after, two weeks after, she went and sat down like others. Of course, she was waiting for second, second diagnosis, diagnosis, and then eventually, the next day, the chemotherapy can start. And she was called for the second test. And when she went for that test, the doctor said, you don't have cancer. You have intestine disorder. And a lot of medicine were given to her. And after one week, she was full of life. In fact, this sister used to be slain. But after that particular healing, she was full, not knowing that all the while, this one was chopping the body. The truth is this. We have to know how to. The woman, that widow, we are reading the gospel today, the teaching us a lesson. Prayer of the weak conquers the strong. The prayer of the weak conquers the strong. You see that there's a strong man, a man who is too strong, a woman who is too strong. Come on, surrender him to God. Because the power to transform, to make things anew, is from God, not from you. Speak to God and keep speaking to God and believing that he is the only one to do it. Because not to pray again means you have an option. You have no option. And God loves this prayer. When you say, God, you are the only one. And you believe in it. Not only that you are you feeling so pain that God is not answering quickly. God must not answer quickly to you. He is God. He is only God. And we are told that the woman got what he wanted. Something we can learn from Moses' side. Why the hand is all dropping? They had to bring stone. First of all, they, 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 they were holding the hand, Aaron and the hall. They were holding the hand of Moses. What they call community prayer. Community prayer is very important. I insist on it. As a family, pray together. One person who is not participating is ready, is enough to dismantle the power of prayer. Any person in a family, the, the wife, the husband, and, and children, one person not praying, especially the father, the head that should lead, should lead others in prayer, the power of prayer will be weakened. And the enemies can come in quickly. Praying together. And those stones by the side, very important. Stone, the symbol of God himself. Even though you are praying, but you must pray, believing that you are in God. You are leaning in God as you're speaking to him. Lean on him. Lean on the stone, God himself, and speak to him. My father, help me. You are the one to help me. Lean on him. Don't lean on something else. Don't lean on your money, on your power, on your energy. Lean on the Son, God himself. God wants to listen to us. We easily get tired. Don't be tired. God wants to help you. That was St. Paul telling Timothy, son, look. You see, the word of God. Is the power where the power of prayer li lies. The highest form of prayer is his word. Listen to it. If you listen to him, to what God's word, you cannot act based on the word of God. So I pray for each one of us today that the Lord may give us the grace to pray consistently. Above all, have that conviction. Have that conviction. 
that you have only one God. One, 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 one. And when you are speaking to that one God, tell him, say it, you are the one God. I don't have any one. And once you do that, miracles take place. I mean, the Lord Jesus, who is always leading us in prayer, help each one of us to rely on God, to be with him, above all, to lean on the rock of ages, God himself. This is my prayer for you today, through Christ our Lord.